hi everybody welcome to this week's video welcome new subscribers i've noticed we've increased in number thank you for subscribing to my channel um this channel is primarily a fashion channel with a special focus on africa and specifically kenya because i'm from kenya and i talk all things fashion information basically more on the business side and maybe some historical things some um, um, how to make things but very rarely do I do any tutorials um, I just don't do tutorials so if you want information about the fashion industry generally this is the channel for you so in today's episode I am going to talk about the Kanga fabric some of you call it Leso um, so Leso and Kanga are used interchangeably in this region it's a primarily East African fabric the features that are um, on a kanga is that first of all it's made of cotton it's made of very light cotton there are some that are polyester and cotton polyester blends so um, I specifically buy the cotton ones because those are the ones I like I use it a lot for my clothes so if you've been here a while you've probably seen my video that I did a while back about how to care for kanga basically how to wash them because they do remove a little bit of color during the first wash how to dry them, how to basically care for them so they can last as long as possible. I'm also wearing one of my new designs which you can check out on my website, uh, Miyamara Creations. The link is in the description as usual. If you would like something nice, I make to order, so check it out. In this week's video, I am going to talk about the history of the Kanga. So I will not repeat the care video because I think I did a very thorough job with the other video, so you could always Watch that I will put the link of that in the description so that you can watch it if you have not watched it already but I'm also going to show you what you can do with a kanga piece of fabric the different ways you can wear it I will also share about how it was worn traditionally and also people do use it for home deco and various other things so kanga is a very diverse fabric you buy it in pairs and you split up the pairs and you can use it um, in different different ways and also another special thing about the kanga apart from the border and that you buy it in pairs is that it usually has a Swahili saying or a proverb that is used to mark special occasions or just to give a nice message to somebody but I will say that in the past um, one of the reasons I used to remove the saying Tuamandishi so to speak Tuamandishi is remove the saying in Swahili uh, I used to remove it because sometimes the the kanga would be very beautiful, but um, the proverb would be um, not as nice because traditionally someone would give a kanga to somebody um, in the Swahili culture and they were trying to pass on a message and let me just say not all the messages were nice messages if you get what I mean. So um, for a long time you had to read the saying some people would actually not even buy such encounters because of the saying but now i've noticed that they just only put positive messages so never worry about the saying and if when you're buying the kanga they'll always tell you what it means so um so i don't ramble too much here let's get into this week's video thank you so much for being here and let's start <laughs> The kanga cloth, or also known as leso, has always been a component of most East Africans' lives. It's traditionally incorporated into massive life events such as birth, matrimonial, and burial ceremonies. Most recently, kangas are used in interior decoration, art, and fashion expressions. The word kanga means guinea fowl in Swahili. It's believed that the name was derived from spotted patterns that are reminiscent of the bird's markings from the first print of the cloth. The word leso is commonly used on the Kenyan coast and derived from the handkerchief squares that Portuguese used called lencos. As early as 1850s, women in the coastal region of Kenya and Tanzania were buying uncut linen squares from Portuguese traders. They would stitch together six colorful pieces to create unique rectangular fabric. By the 1800s, kangas were machine printed in Europe and India using designs created both locally and internationally. 
Kanga is a piece of cloth printed on cotton fabric. It's usually 1.5 by 1 meter long or 62 by 43 inches per piece and it's usually sold in pairs. Kangas have a border usually called pindo and it's on all four sides of the kanga. The center is called mji in Swahili which is the center pattern and then jina is the proverb, slogan, riddle, metaphor, saying that's usually at the bottom just above the border of the kanga. Realizing its potential, traders on the Swahili coast began to create hand-stamped material of their own. Instead of sewing together many cloths, they opted to fashion their own piece, locally woven cloth. By 1897, the kanga was used as a symbol of societal status and as a marker of increased wealth. The 20th century brought the roller printing technology. The kanga was then mass produced in India, China, United Kingdom, and Japan. In the 1960s, factories were setting up in Kenya and Tanzania and were able to produce locally in bulk using their large industrial rotary screen printing machines. As you can see on this clip, manufacturers started labeling each kanga with their names example this is malia abdallah property of abdallah from mombasa kenya the kanga gets its design distinction from assimilated cultural symbols it's collected from around the world the symbols of kangas are found in african ceremonial garments or objects 18th century english wallpaper books french tapestries ancient Persian carpets. They can be found in woven cloth in the Middle East as shapes of local fruits and flowers and even as Indian tie-dye designs. So as we get into kanga messages, I thought I'd show you a little bit of footage of how people use kangas both traditionally and also now. If you just want to buy the kanga as a pair, you can see um, you can use it to carry a baby um, and also um, you can take the separate pieces and tie them individually and wrap them in different ways wrap them in different ways so um like you can see in this video i've tied it on my waist and on my shoulders and you can also tie it over your bust like a sarong so to speak or like a towel in quotes next um you could also tie it on your hair um, typically uh, because the coastal region has a lot of women who are Muslim um, you will also find that they will tie it as a hijab so to speak um, or cover their hair when they're out in public so you'll see this wrapped in this way many times you can also tie it as a top if you are feeling inspired to wear it the top and also use the other pair to tie it on your waist you could also use it um, as a head wrap and tie it in various ways as a head wrap as well so as you continue reading and watching the footage i'll tell you more about the messages in the kanga they were used by swahili women to verbally communicate because they were not really allowed to talk so much in public and by just wearing it with the right message they could share their perspective on various things from rivalries disputes clapbacks displeasure in domestic civil or political issues and it gave the women a voice in society and it, considering it was like a society that insisted they conceal their points of view not all the messages were very obvious additionally um, people also wore kangas just for the beauty of it not directing any message to any specific person something worth noting about how kangas are printed most kanga manufacturers will print the same design in three to four colorways and most of them print them on a limited edition basis so once you miss that print they don't repeat the print unless you do a special order where you have to do a very large run but they only print them once and that's it 
from where i buy my kangas which is mali abdallah they release new designs every week so apart from that um generally kangas are held in very high regard and they're used for many things as you can see in the pictures that are showing as i speak and generally there is especially in tanzania um a status symbol on having a lot of kangas because they tend to use the kanga more than the rest of the east africa region there are so many ways you could use the material from apparel to accessories to even swimwear and it's also used by men and it's combined with western styles you could make western clothes i'm going to show you some of my designs from what i've done with the kanga because i primarily use the kanga a lot and also the messages do vary and sometimes i do remove the messages because some clients don't like it on their kanga so as much as historically it's the women who determined the designs of the kanga lately the men are in on it because they realize it's a very lucrative business yeah so i hope you've learned something interesting about the kanga and now we conclude kanga remains the east african cultural item that shapes the identity of communities with its vibrant colors meanings and the affordable price tag and it's appreciated and used globally it's also a symbol that culture doesn't exist in a vacuum and has endured a lot through the interaction, appreciation, and sharing ideas, thoughts, and belief systems. I hope you've enjoyed uh, the video. I hope you've learned a lot. Remember the one I did for the video I did for caring for the Kanga. The link is in the description. I didn't want to make this video longer than it should be. Um, so uh, I figured I just leave that other video as a separate video and it's also the video I use a lot to share to clients because as I said earlier I do make clothes from Kanga so I hope you check out my website as well uh, feel free to purchase I do make to order we are a size inclusive brand so no matter your size you can make the different sizes you see um, in your size and also please remember kangas are not fabrics at least where i buy they don't repeat the print so like example for this kimono once it's gone it's gone they're not going to repeat the print again so usually i just try to look out for newer and newer prints that would suit even the same design and i advise so don't worry about that and i hope um i'll see you soon i no longer do weekly videos um because of my schedule and because generally researching content for this channel does take a while and i would like to do um more thoroughly researched videos but also space them out so that i also don't overwhelm myself with my schedule so i hope i will see you soon please check out all the videos if you haven't yet some of them look a bit cringy because they were old and I was learning and I didn't have lights and stuff like that. But anyway, I really would appreciate it if you do check out previous videos and also follow me on my social media platforms. And I guess I'll see you soon. Bye.